Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the live stream. My name is Matt Bailey. I'm the National Ambassador for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society here in Australia. Uh, going alive again tonight uh, because it's Monday, because it's a weekday, and I like to go live every single day. Uh, and tonight we're um, talking a bit about the STR, uh, which is, if you expand those letters out, spells shave toast rechar. It's a form of cask treatment that I want to talk a little bit about, how it came to be, some of the history behind it, some of the flavors you might come to expect from it, and all those sorts of things. So I hope you'll come along this journey with me. I always like taking questions and comments as I go. Jay Hodes, big shout out to you, mate. Hope you're well. Um, so throw them in the comment stream, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook group, Facebook page. No matter where you're watching this right now, I am live right now. People are watching, which is great. And I appreciate taking your comments and questions. Now, Monday is normally reserved for Monday rant. I don't really have a rant. There's been so much going on at the moment, which is so exciting uh, at the society and in the whiskey scene in general that there's not much to rant about. And I think that's, uh, that's happened the last few weeks, if I'm being honest. It's sort of like, well, you've got to rant about something. It's Monday, Monday rant. No, no, no. I don't always have to rant about something. And there's still not, not something that's really worth ranting about. Um, but what I do have here is, uh, is a bit of, like I say, a bit of um, history, a bit of flavor, a bit of discuss discussion. discussion sorry. Um, the famous STR distillery. No. So STR means shave toast rechar. It's a type of cask. I want to talk a little bit about it as we go along here tonight. I'm just going to bring up my other other screen here so we can all see what I'm talking about. This here featured on the, on the other screen here is um, Dr. Jim Swan, who sadly passed away in 2017, aged 75 years old. Uh, he died unexpectedly, and, and it was uh, it, he was actually meant to be uh, doing some work at Lindor's Abbey Distillery. Um, <laughs> um Keen to find out about this, Rodney. Good to hear, mate. Uh, Mark Teague, big shout out, mate. Uh, and um, Jay Hurd says, STR pack, same distillery. Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get into that a little bit. Um, does anyone else uh, think shaved toast rechar sounds like a morning routine? <laughs> That's quite funny. Um, it does sound a bit like a morning routine, doesn't it? Yeah, it's something you do each morning when you wake up. Wake up instead of, um, what's, what's the, the three S's? Instead of, um, instead of anyway, look, it's, it's, uh, yeah, shave toast rechar. Wake up each morning with a shave toast rechar. Uh, sounds like something you could have some. Uh, I'll have some marmite on my rechar. Anyway, uh, evening, Mr. Bailey says Darren Howie. Good to see you, Darren. Hope you're well, mate. Um, so, this is Dick, this is Dr. Jim Swan who uh, pioneered and developed the STR cask as we know it today. So I'm just gonna, I'll talk a little bit about what that what that means. There he is again in his other natural habitat in a promotional photo for a distillery called Cavalan, which he was uh, heavily involved in the development of uh, their both their spirit and their um, their casks. When I say development, uh, Jim was one of those guys that wasn't just involved in developing the STR, the Shave Toast Recharge. He was involved in shaping the production aspect of a distillery on every level, from barley to spirit to stills to yeast to everything that he wanted to be involved in, he was very good at involving himself in if that makes sense. So he was very good at uh, creating and shaping the production model for a lot of New World distilleries, if I'm being honest. He was responsible for a lot of what we see today out of Cavalan, uh, Milk and Honey in Israel, Kilhoman in Isla, uh, Pendaren, a whole bunch of distilleries. Um, at Lindor's Abbey, which I was going to get to because uh, our um, state manager, Scott Mansfield, the, the, the see the, the the day Jim passed away, he was supposed to be doing a ceremony at Lindor's Abbey. There's the distillery, uh, and it was he obviously couldn't make it because he was he he'd sadly passed away. But that's um that's Lindor's Abbey there. Our state our state manager um uh, Scott Mansfield has a strong family connection to that distillery, which he's done a really nice little write up uh, in I think it was the August outturn. Uh, no no no, I'm gonna go far, as far back as say June or July outturn. Had a really lovely write up about Lindor's Abbey Distillery. Uh, in in it, and you can read that online as well on our 
smws.com.au slash news. Um, and there's Pandaren, which we re- recently released the um, the electrochemistry release from. So he's had his he's had his hand involved in quite a few uh, quite a few distilleries, as I said, quite a few sort of projects, and in the production side of things has been quite crucial. Uh, and it's not just I wanted to make mention as well on this whilst I'm on these slides here. Um, Cotswolds too, thank you, Cotswolds. Yes, I was, I was trying to think of there's another one. Yes, it's a lot. There's a lot of New World distilleries around um, around Scotland. I mean, like new Scottish distilleries that he uh, pioneered and that he worked quite closely in, and a lot of um, uh, sorry, yeah, new Scottish distilleries and New World distilleries. Is, everything from Israeli whiskey, Taiwanese whiskey, uh, Indian whiskey. He's been, I think, he was quite uh, heavily involved at one point uh, with Paul John. I might be getting that wrong, but um, please correct me if I'm wrong. There, I think he was. Um, but I also want to show, like, it's it's not just um, it's not just New World Distilleries that are adopting his STR. Even just this month's outturn, our um, September outturn, had Fruitcake, Isla Style. It had sadly sold out, I'm sorry, but that's the nature of single casks. They don't hang around. 53.336. This is a 336 cask from Distillery 53. As we saw there, cask type, first fill, STR, barrique. So uh, what I want to demystify today is a little bit about what those what that wording means, what an STR means. So it means shave, toast, rechar. So... Let's examine what that means. An STR is essentially a rejuvenated red wine cask. So first of all, the inside surface of the individual oak staves is shaved. That's the S in the STR. To remove the exhausted surface layer of the cask, the shaved staves are then toasted in an oven, uh, which partially breaks down the structural components of the oak to produce a variety of flavor compounds. So it increases the surface permeability. So, uh, and finally, uh, the final part is the, uh, the, the cask, it's sorry, the inside surface of that cask is reassembled and is recharred. So this induces further degradation of the oak structure, facilitating easier and deeper uh, penetration of the malt spirit into the cask. Um, so charring also produces essential flavor compounds and uh, increases the surface area available to absorb uh, various unwanted flavor compounds such as sulfur compounds. So it was, yeah, like I say, it was it was STR rejuvenation of these red wine casks. Uh, was pioneered by the late Dr. Jim Swan. And it was, um, like I say, he was in, it, one distillery that certainly took that on quite a bit was uh, Cavalan Distillery, um, who we've seen 139.4, Spellbindingly Sublime, was a first fill STR from, which is definitely a part of his legacy there. So I hope that starts, you know, uh, it, one, I'll just go back to Do- Dr. Swan on it for a second here. He was, um, he was quite renowned for his, like I say, his uh, pioneering work in, uh, overseeing and shaping the production method of distilleries from the ground up, which was fantastic. Ali, good to see you. Um, and J Hodes asks, how much material do they normally take off with the STR? You would think with taking out material, they'd take out something that could hold flavor. I, I don't think it's an awful lot. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many millimeters it is, J Hodes, but it's it's certainly um, it's enough that it, it radically changes the shape and um, cask uh, structure, if you like. So that, that part is quite important, but... Um, yeah, so uh, uh, Mark asks here: Is um, is STR X wine process usually a first fill? It's it's always rejuvenated wine casks. Uh, so that means it, it's not necessarily a first fill wine cask that it's come from. It's maybe second fill, but it's always been rejuvenated, which is often what you'll see. It's it's been used in other ways as well, like recharred hogsheads, which isn't quite STR treatment, but um, lends itself to a similar similar flavor profile that you see on on those on rechar hogsheads. You'll see on STRs as well. Pardon me. So just going back to, to Jim here for a second. So he, one of his many skills, like I said, was enabling these distilleries to hit the ground running. It was he's He was very good at um, coming in on the ground level with these distilleries as they were setting up, as they were consulting with him uh, on to get the production and maturation techniques to create a spirit that was approachable in its youth. Now, there was one quote that I remember reading about from, um, from Anthony Wills who's the managing director of if Kilhoman Distillery in Isla. And he, uh, he said, I'm going to read off the screen here, if you look after this, um, you could bottle it after three years. And it was sort of like he was, he was saying that if you look after the, uh, these STRs that were being uh, filled at Kilhoman and the whole production method that they were using uh, was resulting in a whiskey that was extremely well uh, put together after a short amount of time, after three or four years in many cases. Which is why a lot of STR casks are quite young. Some do go a bit longer in the distance, a bit longer in the, and we've seen that just now. I just showed that on the screen there. 
Uh, that was an eight-year-old uh, 53.336. Admittedly, that STR was a finish uh, because eight years in a full STR would probably be a bit overkill. So um, is, it, is STR – some, some very cool questions coming in here. Um, uh, he was also a very humble, nice, and friendly guy and quite open and forthcoming with information and ideas. You know what? One of my biggest regrets, I've met so many fantastic people in the whiskey industry, both in Scotland, in Japan, in Australia, elsewhere, um, that I never got to chance. I never got the chance to meet Jim before he passed away. Uh, and I, it was only a few years ago and I'd been in whiskey already uh, quite a long time already, but I just, I never got the chance to meet to Jim. I never got the chance to meet Jim, which was a, a, a bit of a shame. Um, but I would have loved to. Um, I knew where he was going to be at one occasion uh, in 20, uh, 2014. Uh, anyway, and I, I was supposed to be there at the same time as him and we weren't there together at the same time. So I never got the chance to meet him. Um, but anyway, is STR done by Coopers? Yes. I mean, Coopers or on-site distilleries that are able to uh, do this process. And I think a lot of these distilleries with uh, mini Cooperages on-site can also do this, but Cooperages can also do it on, on mass as well, of course. Um, I'm going to show you. That's the inside here. I'll just zoom, zoom, in, zoom on that for you. Uh, that's the inside of a recharred hogshead right there. So um, uh, wasn't a member when uh, 139s first came out. Is there maybe some other way? Yes, j Hodes, there's some more 139s coming through. They, they are infrequent. They only came out. You haven't been a member that long then. I mean, they came out um, around 2018, I think. 2018? Yeah, I think we first saw them in 2018 maybe or maybe late 17. I'd have to check. Um, but, they, yeah, we do. It's not just it's not just 139s that we get that are STR casks. This month, 53.336, as I said, the code. I think I said the code right. Was an STR as well. Um, three, three, no, three. Uh, losing my sense, of my codes here. What a surprise! Anyway, oh, I'm looking at the wrong outturn. That's why. Three, three, six, fifty-three, three, three, six. It was an STR as well. So that's um, yeah. But we will have more one thirty nines coming as well. Um, but I just want to show you what the inside of a, a, of a recharred hogshead looks like in this case. Uh, this isn't strictly a, well. I don't know. I don't know if this one or is an STR or not. Uh, but I know this is a recharred hogshead, which I took that photo at uh, at Loch Lomond Distillery, in, ca in fact, uh, a distillery that also um, dabbles in cask experimentation. Um, yes, Mark, that is correct. They assume they, they they disassemble the cask to shave the staves. That is correct, and and throw them in the oven, as I said before. Um, so, uh, and I'm just going to show this uh, next. There's there's a whole bunch of freshly recharred hoggies. Um, I think I've shown that photo before, but it's still a good one to look at. And then, and there's one in action right there that's just finished being charred. A little smoke still coming out of it. The smell in that room where those casks are being charred is unbelievable. Uh, it's truly, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful smell. Actually, I do have a video. I have a quick clip I actually want to show you if you don't mind. Actually, if you don't mind, have a look at this. Here we go. Very cool, very cool. So that's that's it in action. Uh, that was a video snuck, uh, probably a little bit close to the hazard area signage, and I wasn't wearing any fluorescent, but I don't think they take that too seriously over there. Um, but yeah, this is that was sort of some of the process that you can see going on there, which is very exciting. Um, so uh, anyway, let me. So the reason why I want to tie this in as well to, is to some of the innovation that we've seen at the society, and where Dr. Swan's work has been in action. He's been working with the society, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, as early as 1991. I think this is rather cool. So everyone talks about Dr. Swan's work, uh, you know, in the in the especially in the last few years where he was very much involved with Cavalan and Milk and Honey and Pandera and distilleries like that. Whereas this is like 1991. There's records of him working with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and it was a um, it was a bottling list in 1991 that described an experiment uh, with cask 39.7. Which was twelve years in a second fill pheno cask, so twelve years in a second fill sherry pheno cask, and then uh, an extra two years in a really good oloroso cask. And the whiskey was described as a very good whiskey indeed. Was the wording? Um, so then the additional maturation gained further momentum in nineteen, as far as into nineteen ninety five, uh, when the managing director of the society at the time, Richard Gordon, uh, enlisted the help of Dr. Jim Swan. Uh, as an advisor for his expertise in wood purchasing and wood management. 
So the society has been working on wood management, uh, wood purchasing, and was being advised on what to do there as early as uh, 94, 95 with Dr. Swan at the SMWS. I think that's rather cool. So that's only, that's about 10 years into the society, really, or 10, 12 years into the society as a, as a club uh, and already working with the likes of, of Dr. Swan on some very cool projects there. Um, and that's and that's kind of, that was something really just fantastic, I'd say. The, the one banner I was going to show up here, there's a great little article actually on our, um, on our site um, which you have just put on the ticker below here, which says uh, smws.com.au slash a history of wood management. I will post this along with the video, that link along with the video um, when uh, after this ends, just so you can actually get to it. Now, I will advise, however, uh, that it is it is strictly a members only article, that one. Uh, it's some of, our, some of our better writing, I think. Uh, I'll just post it here as well, just in case anyone wants to see it. There we go. It should be coming up in the comment section now, also on this video right now as I'm live. How good is that? I can throw throw links out whilst live. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, so that's a history of wood management. That is a members only article. That's got some really in-depth in stuff about our work with Dr. Swan, some of the differences that were made in wood management back then uh, and, and how that's shaped whiskey uh, for a long time. But you have to be a member to access that content. Um, so some of the questions coming in, um, been a member since Fables, watching Spellbinding the Sublime come out with interest, had just been to a Cavalier event and tried the STR Barrique. Yeah, if you've, got, if you've even had a chance to taste Spellbinding the Sublime, you've found something rather cool there. Uh, imagine a single cask would take that to another level. The PX cask strength is also outstanding. Yeah, the, the single casks are unbelievable. Uh, Mark Westmoreland says, whoa, I love Mark coming into these streams. Oh, hi, Matt. It's very interesting to see the SDR expressions being released like Kings Barnes and Kilhoman. Yes, we have some in our Dungeon Warehouse, keeping an eye on them. I bear, I, Mark, I'd be interested to hear more about that, quite honestly, because everything we've seen that SDRs uh, are one of the integral parts that mature a whiskey a little bit quicker. And they allow especially startup distilleries and young distilleries, I'll say, like yours, like Wolfburn, uh, like Kings Barnes, like, uh, like uh, uh, Ballandalock, a, a number of distilleries I know that are now using them in Scotland. Uh, which I, I'll say, I, I wouldn't call you guys a startup anymore. You're definitely established, but it's like definitely a young distillery by modern standards. Um, I'd love to hear how they're coming along. So please drop me a line about that. Uh, it's seriously, um, like I said, we're all we're all, all learning so much more about this uh, at the moment, which is, you know, it's even years um, years after. I'd love to have, yeah, Mark, I'd love to have you on, I'd love to have you on live. Now, last couple of little announcements before I uh, leave you for this evening. It's not a big, not a big stream tonight. Just want to make sure I have, I've checked off everything I wanted to touch on tonight. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll talk more about you know oak compounds and lignans and stuff another night. I was going to go a little bit into that, but I'll just keep it a brief explanation of STR, what they mean, and how they work. So, a uh, couple of quick announcements. I hope you've all had a fantastic outturn on Friday. Happy Monday after outturn to you. Uh, Susie was mad today getting everything, all the orders out, getting everything organized with Australia Post, all that kind of stuff so that all these lovely bottlings that everyone's picked up. If you haven't picked up a bottle of Malt of the Month, which we had the whole cask, it's a second Philex bourbon barrel. So many colors in a rainbow. Fantastic whiskey. I reviewed it on this stream actually last week, so well worth going back through our YouTube or uh, Facebook group chat on that one. Um, however, not a rant tonight, Rob, no, but there is a couple of little things I want to run, I want to run by everyone. Uh, first of all, this is a really obvious one, especially if you're watching on it right now, but... Uh, I strongly encourage you to please check out our Facebook group. The community on there, I'll just show a quick screen grab of what it looks like. The community on there is so good. Uh, it's something I love. I've, and I only just sort of realized there's about 2.9 thousand members, yeah, nearly 3,000 members in the group, uh, which is great to see so many people interested in what we're doing at the society and joining in the discussion, asking great questions, posting great boilermakers, flavor combos, uh, event pictures they've just been at. And we've just had our big Sydney event, the Grand Tour of Space side that Andrew hosted <clears throat> that was uh, unbelievably fun. For everyone who got along to that, that, that was, it was such an enjoyable evening. It really was. Um, so with that said, I'm going to just preview. I'm just going to tease one little thing that's just off camera here because uh, there's some there's some cool stuff coming. There's some cool stuff coming. Now, this is a bit of a tease of a, of a special little bandana, actually, with a custom design, and I'm not going to show you much more than that. I'll post more in the group. That's why you should join the group. You get to see exclusives like that. New things coming in like this, which is I think is very exciting. Uh, that's my rant, my rant, my Monday discussion on STR. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it. I hope you all have a, a wonderful week ahead. Now, speaking of week ahead, 
I can't talk for the other days. Roundtable's probably going ahead Wednesday. I'm not sure what's happening tomorrow night just yet. Roundtable's on Wednesday, but I have a very, very special guest tuning in for an interview. My first interview back in a couple of weeks. Uh, a very special guest tuning in for an interview with me, uh, if you like, a friendly chat, a, uh, a gathering month interview uh, with our um, with a very special guest. I can't name who he or she is just yet, but it's very exciting. Uh, very exciting. Uh, very exciting guest coming on Thursday. The only caveat is that he, uh, I said it, it's he, uh, that he, the chat will be at 4 p.m. on the Thursday. That's the time I'm able to get. It's a very, very busy man. So I'm able to get him at 4 o'clock. I'm really looking forward to having him on. You're going to learn some amazing things off him, and I'm encouraging you to bring your questions. As soon, we'll announce that in the next 24 hours, who that is. I'm really looking forward to uh, having him on. In the meantime, have a great week. Thank you so much again for tuning in, and I will catch you all again tomorrow. Cheers.